A few weeks ago, the 37 Signals folks released a new tool called Mersk. It's a tool for deploying containerized web applications. At first, I thought Mersk was Rails only. But did you know you can use Mersk to deploy a lot of applications? Yep, that's what we are going to do in this video. We still need Ruby installed to run Mersk, but that's it. If your application is packaged as a container, we can run it with Mersk. When we talk about deploying containerized apps, we quickly think of Kubernetes, Docker Swarm, Nomad or any service our cloud provider may have, and some cloud providers even have different services for that, which makes it a bit confusing. But Mersk is much, much simpler than that. It's inspired by another deployment tool called Capstrano. Mersk has a different take on deploying containerized apps. It's minimalistic. Let's play with Mersk for deploying a single of application. This app doesn't do much. I've installed Jetstream and only added a counter at the top. The value is stored in Redis. We also have Laravel Horizon installed, which we can see by visiting the slash horizon route. We will also use Laravel's scheduler to dispatch a job every minute, which will randomly increment the counter. This way we can see that the scheduler is running. We also added a slash op route that renders a green page to signal that the app is running. We will use this route as a health check and point in Mersk later on. Let's open a terminal and install the Mersk gem. We can do that with gem install Mersk. After that, we can run Mersk in the terminal from anywhere. Then we can start configuring Mersk in our project by running Mersk init. This creates a deploy.yml file in our config folder. We can add the base configuration to this one and then create a deployment.production.yml file in our config folder where we are going to configure the server IPs. We could configure everything in our deploy.yml file, but then our .env file, which is where Mersk would look for environment variables by default, would be repurposed for deployment. And I still want to be able to run the app locally, so I prefer using a destination environment instead. In this case, we are naming our destination production, which means Mersk will look for a matching .env.production in our project root. All right, let's configure our deployment. I'll name the service Laravel Mersk Demo. I already created a private image on Docker Hub, so we'll call it ToneSM Mersk Laravel Demo. Next, we can remove the service config as we'll be using a destination config, which we'll talk about in a second. For the registry, we can use our Docker Hub username and password. And for the password, we can create an access token in Docker Hub. This value will come from our .env file. Since we'll name our destination production, Mersk will look for it in a .env.production file. Don't worry. By the time this video is out, I already deleted this key, but thanks for worrying about me. We have other things in the .env.production file. Most of it is to configure the MySQL container. Yes, we'll run MySQL as a container. This is just as a demonstration, of course. In a real production environment, I would highly recommend using a managed service instead. Even the 37 Signals folks decided to run some stateful bits of the infrastructure in regular VMs instead of containers. With that being said, running it as a container might be fine. If your load is not that high and your alternative is setting up a droplet, then installing MySQL on it yourself, I'd say running it with Mersk is fine. Next to the MySQL specific credentials, we have our app key and the database URL and the Redis URL environment variables, which will be injected in our app at runtime. Next, we have the broadcasting config, which we are not gonna use, but Here's where you could send a Slack message to notify the team on every deploy, for instance. We also don't need the SSH specific config, let's delete that, but we do need to change a thing in the builder config. By default, Merce builds both the x86 and R images. But since I'm running on an Intel chip and my server has the same architecture, I can disable the multi-architecture build. If we look for multi arc in the docs, we'll find the specific section, then copy the config and paste it in our YAML file. Next, we have the accessories list. So any service your app needs that can be run as a container 
we can use Merge to run it as an accessory. Accessories aren't part of our deployment workflow as they change at a different pace than our app does. We'll also configure accessories in the destination specific config file. So we can delete that from this file. We'll not need any specific traffic configs, but we need to configure our health check endpoints to use the slash op path on port 80, since that's the port our container will be running on. Now let's create our deployment.production.yml file in the config folder. I have a stub file we can use to speed things up. Let's copy that and paste in the config folder. Let's delete this bit. We'll come back to that later on. Before we start configuring the server, let's provision two DigitalOcean droplets. We'll name the first one Web1 and the second one DB, even though we'll be running MySQL and Redis in this DB VM. Next, let's be good citizens and configure our firewall rules. The first one will be for our web VMs. They should be able to receive traffic on port 80, besides the SSH connections. Then we assign the web droplet to this firewall rule and that's it. Next, let's create our DB firewall. For this one, we need to allow traffic on the MySQL port, but we only want to allow connections coming from the web VM in this case. We also need to allow traffic on the Redis port, which is 6978, and also only from the web VM. Now we assign the DB VM to it and that's it. The droplets should be provisioned by now, so we can grab the IP of the dbvm and configure it in our Redis and db accessories. We also need to change our .env.production file, so the connection URLs for Redis and MySQL are both pointing to the same server. And that's it for the database. Let's grab the IP for the web VM and configure our web role with it. With that, we can now deploy our application. Since this is the first deploy, we also want to deploy the accessories. So we are going to be using Mersk setup with the dash D option as production. So it loads the destination config and environment variables correctly. One cool thing about Mersk is that you can see all commands it's running on the server. It first checks if curl and Docker are installed and if not, it installs them. Then it creates the volumes we specified in our MySQL accessory and then runs the MySQL container. It does the same thing for Redis. So it starts with the accessories. Now it's time to build our image locally, which by the way, I have created a Docker file to run this app locally. This is not an example of a good image. It's just something that I hacked together to be able to test this. It has some config files which lives in resources docker. One important thing about this docker file is that it has an entry point script, which we can open. So when the docker container boots, we first need to run artisan optimized and artisan view cache. Then if we are running the container with no arguments, which is the default way when we run it as a web container, it will first try to migrate the database and then start the supervisor D process, which is the process that starts an Nginx and a PHP FPM. We can also run this container for other kinds of workloads, like starting the horizon process, which will just execute our command without trying to migrate the app. If we go back to the terminal, it should be finished by now. Now, let's go to the browser and try to access the web server's IP on it, and voila our app is running. Let's create an account and everything should be working as expected. If we access the slash horizon route, we can see we have no worker processes running. Let's fix that. We'll need two new droplets for that. As of right now, we can't run two containers for the same app in the same host, but that's going to change. Soon, we'll be able to run multiple containers of the same app in the same host for different roles. For now, let's create one droplet for each row. We'll provision them in the same region and we'll name them worker1 and crown. Next, let's create the firewall rule for the CLI apps. 
we won't accept any requests on these CLI VMs as they are mainly for background tasks, so only SSH will be fine. Then we can attach both the worker and the Chrome VMs to it. We also need to update our database firewall rule to allow connections coming from the CLI servers. Once that's done, we can grab the worker IP address and create our new worker role in the server's config. We will use a different format here instead of the one used in the web role because we also want to specify the command our container will run. In the case of our worker, we want it to run PHP Artisan Horizon. Next, let's configure our Chrome role. Grab the IP and create a Chrome role in the YAML file. We will use the same format as the worker, but our command will be different. We have a Chrome tab definition in the config Chrome tab file. We'll run multiple commands from this Chrome container, so we need to wrap them as a single command using the bash dash c trick. Then we can cat the Chrome tab file and pipe its content to the Chrome tab command. This should configure the Chrome tab to run properly. Now we can just start the Chrome process with Chrome dash app. If you look for Chrome in the merge documentation, you can see a similar example. Now we can run merge deploy dash d production. This will get Docker installed on the new servers and deploy the new version of our app to them. Looks like it's done, so let's open Horizon dashboard and confirm that our processes are running. And they are, that's awesome. If we wait a little bit, Cron should trigger the scheduler to dispatch some jobs, which will be picked up and processed by Horizon and increment the counter. At this point, we can point the domain to our web server and be done with it. I'll do that behind the scenes. All right, so Cloudflare is pointed to our web app and it's working. However, this is a demo and I want to show you how you can horizontally scale this app. Let's create two new droplets one for the web and another one for the worker roles. Next, we have to update our firewalls to add the new servers. I'll fast forward as you have seen me doing that already. Now we can get the new worker's IP and add it to the host list of our worker role. Then we would do the same for the web role. Next, we can run merge deploy dash D production. You know the deal. Let's grab the web2 IP address and see if it, the app is running in the browser. Looks like it is. Let's create a load balancer in DigitalOcean. Choose the same region in which the other VMs are running. We only need one node for this one as it, this is a demo. Then we can connect the web servers to it. We can also configure the health check endpoint. The load balancer will check if our app is healthy using that endpoint before it starts sending traffic to it. We can use the same slash up route as our traffic config uses. Let's wait for it to boot so we can grab the IP. We need to configure our app to trust this load balancer. A reverse proxy sets some X forwarded headers. As it could be a security issue, since it may mess with sessions and other configs, we need to allow this specific proxy as a trusted one, so those headers will take place. Now we can run Mersk redeploy d production, which should go faster than the regular deploy as this one assumes we already have everything installed on the servers, which is true in this case. Now, if we open the load balancer in the browser, we should see the app is running. If we refresh a couple of times on the welcome page, we should see the host name that our app is running on changes. That means it's successfully sending requests to both our servers. Sweet. We should be able to log in and use the app just like normal. Then, if we visit the Horizon dashboard, we should see our two processes are running, which we do, so that's nice. Now, let's point our domain to the load balancer's IP address. Our domain is fully running behind a load balancer now. And that's it, really. Again, just to restate this, I'm over-provisioning here. Depending on your app needs, you may not need two web servers or two worker servers. One might be fine. And once that issue I mentioned earlier is fixed, 
we'll be able to run all this workload on a single VM if we want to. Well, maybe on a slightly more powerful VM, as I'm running this on the cheapest one, which is short on resources. Which brings me to another point. MERSC is designed in a way that we can manage our resources at the VM level and then use Docker to package up, ship and run our apps on those VMs. But if we want to run multiple containers on the same server, then we need to slice up our resources. So each role has the amount of resources it needs to run and nothing more. Luckily, there is a way to pass container options to our Docker run command. So we can use that to configure our container resource constraints, such as how much RAM it should use or how many CPUs and so on. And one more thing, make sure you don't commit your .env.production to Git, but also make sure you don't send it inside your Docker image layers as well. You can use a Docker ignore file to make sure your image doesn't contain anything you don't want to. You could also encrypt the EMV using Laravel's encrypted environment files and push that encrypted file to the Git repository. Then you can delete the .env.production and recreate that by decrypting the encrypted file. This way your teammates can also deploy the app more easily. Just make sure you don't share the secret key. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be using Mersk on my personal projects from now on. I'll see you when I see you. Bye.